Hey everyone, looks like we're live. Welcome, thank you for being here. Um, it's Thursday nights with Mel and myself. How are you doing, Mel? It's always fun. I'm good. I look forward to Thursday nights with Kevin and Mel. Yeah, me too. It's, it's we, alternate, we alternate weeks on each other's channel, but I kind of feel like it, whether I'm on your channel or you're on mine, I just feel like it's our channel. <laughs> yeah. It's And it's been a couple weeks. Uh, last week I had a Reiki session really early in the morning and you were traveling, but it's good to kind of be back on a semi-regular schedule. We'll be good for next week, but the following week I'll be on a trip. So... And we're going to go Sunday and Monday to see the eclipse. We're going to go to Carbondale. So uh, Southern Illinois is about six hours from here. So everybody, please, oh, nice. it's just partly cloudy. So everybody, please, you know, send energy that is that cloudy <laughs> so we can see the eclipse. The last time we went, I think it was in Missouri in 2017 or whenever mm -hmm. it was. And um, it was it was rainy yeah. and overcast. So we didn't see the eclipse, but we experienced it. What I mean by that is, is when it happened, it did get dark. It got dark, totally. Not like midnight dark. It's like this translucent kind of dark. It's a weird yeah. dark. And I think it lasted for about four minutes. It was really cool. Um, yeah. It so, comes right up through Cleveland, too. So prayers right. for both of us and, and everybody along the path that we have a clear well, you're view. In, you're in the path, right? Yeah, it comes right up by Cleveland. Oh, so then you got to yeah. like video it just wear your wear your glasses so you don't blind yourself but. i got them already yep i'm looking forward to it i've never seen a full total eclipse so i've experienced um, but i've never seen it eclipse because it was cloudy so i'm hoping you know i'm hoping it'll be clear so i can film it and i'll have my glasses on and then <laughs> right but everybody if you're going to go to the eclipse wear those glasses because the sun can burn your retinas and it can cause permanent damage, even blindness. So where are the glasses? Yes, I think, well, maybe I shouldn't say anything because I'm not an expert, but I think you can take them off the four minutes that it's in yes. totality. Right. But then making sure that you put them back on. Right. Once it's out of totality, then you've got to wear them because it will burn yeah. your retinas. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today, so I'm going to try my best to, to push through it and have a good show. I did want to make a bit of an announcement. I had Susan Lynn on last night as a guest, and um, somebody said a not very nice comment about her. I feel like I have to say it every now and then, but uh, for the most part, everybody's very kind and um, supportive. But I don't tolerate disrespectful comments. I think everybody's entitled to their own opinion. We don't need to share it if it's nasty, um, you know, for myself, my guests, or um, subscribers watching. Just know if you leave nasty comments, your comments will be deleted and blocked. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's no need for it, you know. I think everybody in our community is pro-humanity, and some of the topics that we touch on are a bit divisive, and and that's fine. Like I said, if, if you don't agree with what we're saying, you don't have to watch or if you want to watch, keep it respectful. That's all we ask. Um, I agree. Ditto. Yes. <laughs> Kevin. Ditto. ditto, ditto. <laughs> I agree. Uh, Kevin, the healing mediums in the house. Hi, Kevin. Um, little infomercial. Kevin yeah. Lewis, the healing medium. Kevin Chandler, Kim Copeland, uh, Deanne PD, uh, and Arthur and Linda Grindle will be at our September event in Chicago. So if you're interested, call my office, 847-590-5411, or email me at my, on my website, www.meldor, M-E-L-D-O-E-R-R.com. I'm getting a, a little brochure, not a brochure, but like a, uh, I don't want to say ad, but almost like a landing page or something put together that I'm going to put on my website. It's almost done. And so... Nice. Uh, I'm really excited about it. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. And I'm looking forward to, to meeting everybody. And I think all of the amazing readings and lectures, and I think it's going to be a really fun trip. So it's a small, it's a smaller group. So if you're interested, make sure that you reach out to Mel, because I think it's going to book up really quickly. But, um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, Mel. And next year in St. Croix. Yes, yeah, so in 2025, right around Halloween, St. Croix. So be a lot of fun i'm gonna um i'm gonna start because i've read on this 
on my solo show on Tuesday, I mean, Susan Lynn talked about it and it seemed like a lot of people in the community really um, liked it as we were kind of talking about our election predictions, which were still a little bit early. Like I said, as we get kind of closer, I think we'll probably all start doing a little bit more deep dives and being able to fill out the energy. But I found it really interesting um, and really hopeful that in Florida, they're going to put abortion and marijuana on the ballot. And I do, I do feel like it's going to make things competitive in that state. What are your thoughts about um, abortion in Florida? I've been for a long time, I see Florida turning purple. I don't mm-hmm. think this can run again because I think he, there's term limits down there. But um, uh, I see Florida turning purple. Um, you know, whether women are Democrats or Republicans, not MAGA, but Democrats or Republicans, many of them are hopping mad about this whole abortion thing. Um, And this is going to be a bellwether, just like a lot of these local elections have been in state elections where the Democrats are taken over because people are, they're mad about Roe v. Wade. They want to reinstate it and it will be at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's going to be a referendum really on women's rights. And the same in Alabama, the Alabama Supreme Court just ruled that fetuses are children. Mm. And so it's it's sad because anybody that wants to go through in vitro in Alabama, the, the provider down there is going to do it up until December 31st of this year, then they're going to stop doing it. And that takes away rights of people who want to get pregnant. Right. So I see a lot of states turning that are, are now red turning purple. I really do. Isn't it a bit of a contradiction, though? Like you say that you're pro-life, um, but then like you're against women having children with IVF treatments. Like it's kind of a contradiction. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Exactly. A lot of <laughs> right. Or it's like, um, um, you know, th- those people that said they're pro-life, but yet they told people not to wear a mask and they let people die. Right, I mean, right. I don't get it, you know. Um, but I think Florida as well as a lot of other states is going to be a well- bellwether. A lot of people are nervous about Kennedy running uh, you know, the anti-vaxxer kind of wacko dude, uh, it, it'll take votes away from Biden. I see it taking votes away from Trump. Yeah. I saw a really good clip on CNN. It was online. And they asked like seven, six or seven Kennedy supporters um, if Kennedy's not running, who they would vote for. And six out of the seven said Trump. So that right there tells you they're Trump voters. Right. But People are nervous about Kennedy taking votes away from Biden. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. No. It's too extreme. And I feel like a big push, we're starting to see it now, but even uh like this summer, it feels like a lot of momentum behind Democrats. But kind of going back to Florida, I felt you know, I'm always a little bit leery about Florida because I do feel like they have some uh shenanigans in play and voter suppression there. I actually feel better about Texas, but um, I do feel like that Senate race could be at play. And when I threw on it um, for Biden's chances of winning Florida, I wasn't getting a definite no, but I think where the energy stands right now, it's going to be super, super close. But like I said, I almost feel better about Texas going more purple than Florida, um, surprisingly enough. Um, Maybe it's for Ted Cruz's seat again. Um, rather than presidential, but I still see Florida purple. Um, mm-hmm. it's Ted, definitely come close. I just keep seeing Ted Cruz out of office. Yeah, me too. Um, Cancun Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> what about do you feel like Biden's going to be able to flip any red states that he lost in 2020 blue in 2024? I see one or two, absolutely. I feel like North Carolina has a very good chance of going blue especially because they have that crazy guy running for the governor. And um, I feel good about North Carolina. Like I said, I feel like Texas or Florida could go too. I do. I think out of all the states that Biden won in 2020, I think he's going to win Georgia still, but that one feels like it's the closest to me. Georgia feels a little bit weird for me for 2024, but, um, but I mean, even if, if Biden wins North Carolina, um, let's say he keeps all of his states and possibly wins Texas or Florida. It's it's a total landslide for him to win re-election. So what do you think about Kennedy running? 
Well, I kind of feel like he's a plan in there because that's what their goal is to try to take votes away from Biden. Exactly. Um, yeah. But I actually think it's interesting because they think he plays more on Team Trump and people that support Trump and fund Trump are funding him. But I almost feel like it's going to backfire because I feel like it's going to take more Trump voters away. Then I don't see a lot of Democrats getting behind uh, Kennedy. I don't. And Even good news today, I posted it on my community board. No labels said that they're not going forward with pursuing a presidential I candidate. Just all that. Even the Kennedy family doesn't like Kennedy. But right. I think right. I think what people are nervous about is that um, because the independent voters, and I think they're nervous that if Kennedy gets a lot of the independent voters, then Biden doesn't, nor does Trump. But it could still sway the election to Trump. And I don't see Trump winning. I just don't. No. I could be wrong, but I don't see it. Having I feel said, like take some of the radical votes away from Trump, though, it doesn't feel like independent voters are really for him. It feels like it's more MAGA, radicalized people, anti-vax people. And Trump's comments are going to be even getting worse and worse, and that's going to turn a lot of people off. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. He's a. Uh, I threw on him last week. Somebody wanted like a side-by-side -side comparison of Trump and Biden's cards for just like a single card for like the next six months. Trump had the tower in uh, in April and he had the 10 of swords in May and it didn't get much better after that. So I think some, uh, some really bad news is coming forward for Trump and the Republicans very soon. Well, I see him convicted in that case in New York, the, the hush money. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, Trump made a motion to have, um, they have, Oh, he made a motion to have the Georgia case dismissed, and the judge said no. Yeah. And there was something, I think also in New York, he made a motion that the judge said, uh-uh. The thing that concerns me in the federal case is Eileen Cannon. Mm -hmm. And she, she made a ruling today that looks like it favors Trump, but really it doesn't. Because she's giving jury instructions and you don't even have a jury yet. And right. the jury instructions is like either way that she's going to give Trump wins. And so I see Jack Smith taking it to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. And um, it was uh, Trump's bid to dismiss uh, the, the, uh, the federal documents case. Anyway, I see Smith taking it to, this, to the 11th Circuit, Cannon's yeah. rules. And I see her being forced to recuse herself. I see her off that case. I could yeah, be wrong. What do you no, we both have said that. I feel this exact same way. But I think that whole thing that she's in Trump's pocket, that's going to help sway the election for the Democrats as well. Because okay. <laughs> that's where I was. I looked like my ADD kicked in, but there was a message. You're good. In this. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I just feel like all of the legal pressure contributes to all of like the outbursts the health is really going downhill with him and it's becoming very apparent and obvious it's like it, he just implodes he implodes like i said i don't know if he passes if he has a major health event that kind of takes him out or maybe he's still around but the rnc kind of puts somebody else in. it just feels like total chaos come uh november actually you know actually like end of summer fall before the election for the um republicans it feels like the Republican convention is going to be like it's it. There's so much chaos. Well, we've got seven months before the election, and a lot, yeah, got, a lot. Yeah. Can happen. But um, he just continues to unravel and unravel, though, doesn't he? He does, and you know, it's like my guides keep showing me. It'll look like Trump and in, in the in the courts, uh, you know, and all that stuff against Trump, and the not against Trump, but the cases against him. It'll look. Even politically, it'll look as if he scores, he'll win a few battles. And I've seen that happen. But my guides keep, keep telling me he will not win the war and justice will be done. And that's what I'm going on. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree 100% no. You know, Florida, I see, you know, people are moving out of Florida in droves. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the Satan passed a law where, you know, um, if, if there's damage to her from hurricanes and stuff like that and the insurance company says they're going to pay this month this much people uh the public adjuster used to be able to uh go after the insurance companies on behalf of the clients well it's a satan pass a law they can't do that anymore yeah uh, 
And so it was to protect the insurance companies. And the, and the dividend, I mean, the prices have gotten so high for hurricane insurance. Can't People are moving out in droves. And, and mm -hmm. plus, they don't like, you know, the fact that you can't say gay. Women's rights there in the toilet. And people are moving out. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I've heard some people in the Keys, uh, how much they charge for insurance. People don't even have it because a hurricane damages their house. It's cheaper just to repair it or replace it on your own. Well, what's going to happen, you know, people are just going to start walking away from the property on there because they can't afford it. Yep. And it's going to put a lot of property on the market. It's going to create a lot of foreclosures. And I see that coming within a year. It's starting already. And so a lot of, you know, banks and things like that will be buying up the property for this much, selling them for that much and still making money. And yep. um, uh, I see federal legislation at some point to prevent all that. But uh, Florida's going to be having a tough time economically because of the same. I agree. I see a lot more blue winds in Florida. And I agree, especially in Texas as well. You're right about mm -hmm. that. It almost feels like to me, I feel better about Texas short term rather than, um, you know, like good news with, with, with Texas. It feels like Florida might be a little bit longer, like maybe two or four years. But I agree by the time DeSantis is term so his terms done it feels like it's more purple at that point what do you pick up about paxton in texas the, <clears throat> the well, I feel like he's going down <coughs> excuse me i always felt like there's more investigations and charges against him and i actually felt like he might take down abbott and the lieutenant general as well feels like he takes down a couple people in texas leadership but it's i feel like texas has a bit of a hard time with you know the infrastructure i do feel like they might have a quite a bit of flooding like there might be a hurricane that affects texas this year but and um structure as well is crumbling yeah so but also too it's like they're going so radical and now they're talking about bringing up murder charges for women that have abortions in texas i feel like women are really riled up whether abortions on their ballot or not um and actually, Ted Cruz is starting to freak out because he's saying that Colin Allred is getting like three times the amount of money that even Beto was getting when he was campaigning and running. And his campaign isn't getting any money. <laughs> he's begging people on Fox News to send him donations. He'll get a few, but not a lot. I can tell you right now, I had said my guides have told me that Beto wasn't done in Texas. And I still see him. In a high level government position or elected to a high level government position. So he's going to be very vocal, I think, in this election. Well, I don't think, uh, I don't, um, can um, Abbott run again? I don't know. I know, I, I know. Think so. But I don't see Beto as governor, though. I think he'll become a senator. That's right. I felt the same way when he was running for governor. I almost felt like it would be close, like he would have a, sh a shot, and the energy felt like it was kind of going more competitive with him for governor, but I always worried about his safety as governor too. I've always felt like he's destined to be a senator of Texas. So I, maybe it's I think he'd be a great senator. Uh, I see mm -hmm. a high level government position and yeah. uh, he's going to be very instrumental in turning Texas purple. Yeah, I agree. All right. All right. Let's get to some questions. I just want to say real quick, thank you so much, Susan, for becoming a, a member. Yes. Appreciate that. And, and by the way, go ahead. ahead. Sorry, Kevin, go ahead. No, I was just going to, I was going to say that I don't have questions, but I wanted to pull up a couple of things. So if you have something you want to add, no. And by the way, if people become a member of my channel, I'll give them, uh, I'll give them a $25 discount uh, for a session, but you have to be a member for at least a month to get, to, to get that discount. <laughs> Nice. Um, okay. Not a These subscriber, are, not a subscriber, but a member. <laughs> yeah, part of your members program. Right. It's a lot of fun. Um, I always enjoy my members' lives. I mean, I enjoy our lives here too. It's always good to get, you know, with everybody. But it's nice too when you have a little bit of a smaller, more intimate group and really I agree. get to know everybody too. It, it's I agree. more intimate. My membership builds up. I'm going to start to have membership live as well. Yeah. Maybe we might can do a collab for your members and my members live. We can, I don't know if we can do that together. I don't know how yeah, that works. We can do that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, just Absolutely. To, we can do it the same way we're doing it now. It's just your... Uh, just for members. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
Perfect. Yeah. This right. isn't really a question, but um, you pulled up what I was going to anyway. But mm -hmm. Kat says Trump is a triple threat guy. He got triple judicial rejections today. Judge McAfee rejected his his bid in Georgia to, on uh, free speech claim. Judge Cannon rejected his presidential um, immunity, presidential records acts. And then also Judge Mershon in, uh, in falsifying business records re rejected to delay but, um, immunity. But, go ahead. Go ahead. But Judge- I was just going to say that Judge Mershon, that uh, he's not going to, he's not going to take himself off the case. I know that no. that's what he's doing well, now. No. And, and I see him getting really strong with this gag order too. He like is. He's not playing. He's gonna um, hold Trump Trump in contempt if Trump keeps it up. But what I was gonna say about Cannon's decision, yeah. don't be fooled by that. I was watching Glenn Kirshner, and it looks like it's in favor of Trump, but it really is not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, look at Glenn Kirshner talking about it. It's pretty amazing. Because the way she ruled, you know, this is not about the president. Uh, uh, it's not about what she's saying it's about. It's about Trump cre Trump committed crimes, okay? Yeah. It's not about the Presidential Records Act. That's what she keeps making it about, but it's not about that. <laughs> well, she's not understanding the Presidential Record Act where he oh, can't. Uh, that's I what think, it is. I think she, she I think she. To... Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say she understands it, but she's trying to play um, ignorant on it so that she can serve Trump, right? Well, she's playing in Trump's pocket and, and his lawyer's pocket because what she's going to try to do is give those instructions to the jurors. And how can you do that when you don't even have a jury? And essentially, the instructions she's going to give them is they would have no other choice but to acquit Trump. Mm -hmm. And so once that's done, it's Katie bar the door because then you then... Jack Smith couldn't appeal that. But what he is going to do is appeal her rulings and all of this to the 11th Circuit Court before it gets yep. to that and say, wait a minute, she has no idea of what she's doing. And, and essentially, the order she gave out and her response today was totally illegal. It, it's mm -hmm. just, and, and there's a, there's a basket full of stuff to have, her, to have her taken off this case. Yeah. Well, that's why she's going to be taken off because she's she's doing all of these rulings that aren't following the law. And um, I, Jack Smith, I would not want to go up against Jack Smith. He's well, wrote right. down everything that she's done that's improper um, or that maybe shows more of a bias towards Trump that doesn't follow the law. And so he's got like a whole binder worth of information he's taken to the appeals court. And that will be why she's taken off. And I think that's happening soon. Um, this feelings. ruling today, it was it was probably orchestrated by Trump's team. It was to say, look, I'm really not biased. I ruled against mm -hmm. Trump. But underneath that, there's a strategy. And, and people are starting to see that strategy. So she, Trump's team thought if she ruled today, that, like I said, they, oh, no, they, they could say or she could say I'm not biased toward Trump. <laughs> but really, yeah. she is. And that... I mean, it keeps coming out more and more, and there's going to be some whistleblowers that'll come out and even say that they that they know and they've witnessed her being biased toward Trump. <laughs> yeah. So I agree, Mel. Um, anyway, so double rejections, but the one by Cannon, uh, -uh mm -mm, I'm not buying that one. I know right. what she's up to. <laughs> yeah, he's going to take her to the Eleventh Circuit, and and I think this is like her. He's already taken her there twice. It's like three strikes you're out is kind of how I'm feeling it. Here, Kat says Judge Cannon rejected Trump's Presidential Records Act claims to dismiss the documents case. That's exactly what it is, Kat. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's your feeling about uh, Indiana for um, 2024? I still feel like Indiana is going to stay red, unfortunately. I see them staying red, but I do see some dims in Indiana picking up seats in the Indiana House and the Indiana Senate. So. Yeah. Um, That's good. Um, I don't think statewide though. I, I feel like the, I feel like the governor's race, um, and like the majority stay run. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what their map looks like. I'm sure that they're very gerrymandered in that state too. 
I'm more interested in Wisconsin to see, uh, because they have a Democratic governor, but it's a Republican House and Senate, a supermajority. And I see that changing in Wisconsin. Um, I see the Wisconsin yeah. turning purple and then blue. Wisconsin used to be the most progressive state in the union. Yeah. And after uh, Governor Scott Walker, I think was his name, whatever his name was, he changed all that. But I see, um, it's amazing what they can change in four years. But I right. see... I see that supermajority that the MAGAs have in the House and the Senate up there. I see that flipping back to Democrats and independents. I feel like, uh, I don't think it will be before the election in 2024, but I think their next election when they're doing House races for the state, I see them changing the maps so that it's more fair. Um, and I agree with you. I feel like Democrats taking over the state house in Wisconsin. Becky it definitely Gil feels like it's shifting more blue. Right. Becky Gilber Gilberto says, I'll miss you tonight. Uh, and Northern Mountain Dancer says, or NH Mountain Dancer says, you can get them on the replay. So hi, Becky, and thanks for that NH Mountain Dancer. <laughs> mm. Let's talk about this real quick, because um, I saw a couple of people bringing it up. Did you hear about Trump's bond being rejected? And now they're looking into, I guess, if, if the bond is valid, like if there's money behind it. Um, I I felt like the bond, and I I was reading with it with Susan last night, I heard about it. Um, so I haven't been able to really look at it, but I feel like he didn't have his all the documents that he needed, but I do see them really d diving deep into um, who's funding the bond and if it's actually going to, if it's legit or not. And I feel a lot of problems with that. What are you feeling? Well, I didn't know that, it, that the bond got rejected. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad it did in a way. But I think they are looking at how it's being funded and the feasibility of the insurance company funding him. In other words, how, how much money does that company have and how legal is it for them to do that? Mm -hmm. So uh, when did this bond get rejected? I think yesterday. So they just said they're not going to accept the 175 million from where he's getting it, or what? What was the it was rejected because, um, from what I understand correctly, when he submitted the bond, he didn't have all of the information. Like he didn't show his financial statements, shocker, <laughs> and other things that were needed for it. I think he did resubmit it though. But now Tish James, I think, is looking into the person that gave him the bond. They yes, they are. Liquid Absolutely. Assets to cover the bond. I got a funny feeling it's going to be rejected a couple more times and that he's going to have to end up paying interest on top of interest. And I kept thinking he might even have to come up with a four, whole 475. <laughs> no, he thought he'd have to come up with 475 million. He's like, I'm broke. I don't have the money. Now that he thought he could come up with 175, oh, I have the money, I have the, oh. But now he's going to start crying broke again. <laughs> I almost feel like Tish James is not messing around and she's going to start doing things to try to seize assets with this bond, is my exactly. feeling. Exactly. I, I, you know, my guides have shown me that assets are going to be frozen of Trump's. Um, they're not going to mess around. They're not playing around. And if Trump's lawyers were that great, and if he, he, he's putting up a bond for $175 million, don't you think they should have known to fill out the proper paperwork? Trump didn't right. put paperwork in there because he's hiding something about his income. That, and I think he's continuing to play games and trying to delay things out even further, right? Correct. It's a stall tactic. Just like the whole thing about... You know, now he's going to appeal that the judge's rule in the in the um, uh, uh, the two judges that not not loose cannon, but the two judges that uh, ruled against him today. He's going to try to appeal those things. It's just delay, delay, delay. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, now, wait, what was the one in Georgia that what did the what did the judge rule in Georgia? Oh, well, Trump was trying to get the case dismissed, and he said no. No. Because well, he has First Amendment rights. So Trump will appeal that ruling. to the, He's going to try to take it to the Supreme Court, but it's not going to it, – it's not going to be uh, – it's not going to be dismissed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh, Mimi. That's, this is a good one. The bond yeah. insurance company failed to report the company's financials. Whoa. 
So that's what Tish James is going to be looking into. Carrie says, my dispatch reported that Knight Insurance only has $138 million, so they don't have enough to cover the bond. And then they're also, I don't think they're, they're licensed in New York, so there's <laughs> a lot of issues there. So how could they even say they're going to give them $175 and they're not even licensed in New York? All right. Well, that's why it's all going to be investigated. Yeah. Hello. I mean, mm -hmm. ooh, that's why Trump didn't disclose the paperwork. He right. thought he must think people are stupid, like they won't find out stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be huge. Um, well, and I was talking to Smith and Lynn too, and I think, I think the person that posted um, helped him with the bond. I think he has ties to Putin too, so it feels like it's it's very, it's going to be investigated very heavily. It's I think Trump is really going to regret um, any kind of like getting money for you know for the to, to hold up the bond it's because he, he doesn't have the money you know um it, um yay <laughs> yeah. uh, and i also see that uh, i i probably said this early on in the show but that he's gonna be found guilty in the whole stormy daniels cover-up thing yeah i see that too he'll he'll appeal it which may, i mean by the time it appeals i think it'll probably come after the election it's a shame though that uh it's the first one happening because I think out of all of the chart, all of the cases against him, um, it's probably like the least significant. Not to say that it's insignificant. I don't feel that way, but I don't know if I feel jail time with that. Well, if a Democrat had done that, mm -hmm. right, they would have been nailed to a cross already. But my guides keep telling me the women will bring him down. And it's yep. when this whole Stormy Daniels thing first came up when Trump was president. And even now, the way back then, my guide said, the women will bring him down. And here we are. Here so, we are. And I can tell you what else. Mer Mershon, is that Judge Mershon? His daughter, I think it's Laura or Lauren, she's going to file a lawsuit against Donald Trump because of what Donald Trump has said about her. Trump can say, I didn't say it. Um, a commentator on Fox News did, and she's also in the Sue Fox News, and she's going to win against Fox, and she's going to win against Trump. You mark my words. Yeah, I could see it. It's going to be a huge lawsuit. I feel like it gets to a point though with Judge Mershon, um, where he's almost. I feel like he's going to be fine for um, violating the gag order. It's like I think he tries it once, and then the second time he gets fined even higher. Um, and then Judge Marchand's like, listen, I've had enough with this. Or I'm about ready to send you to jail. I feel like that threat is there because um, he's not putting up with, with Trump's crap. My guides had shown me a long time ago that Trump would be held in contempt of court and would mm -hmm. be under house arrest. And um, I keep saying that. That hasn't changed. Yeah, I agree. Marchand's not going to play around. <laughs> no. I feel like I'm yelling at Trump in the courtroom. Maybe Trump starts a scene when they pick the jurors or the next time he's in the courtroom. I feel like he he lets them have it in front of everybody. Well, Trump is going to try to do anything he can to get those judges to make a mistake. So then he'd have grounds to turn it over an appeal. Or at least that's what Trump's lawyers are up to. But it will not win. I and feel like he said something, though, with the jurors present that would obviously be like trying to um to pressure the jurors into like you know changing their votes and all that i feel like he gets kicked out of the courtroom my light bulb just went on because if he can do that and create a scene then he could create a mistrial and mm. then you'd have to go to trial all over again it would delay it even more but the judge is going to say no i'm not falling for that i am not declaring a mistrial that's yeah. what's going to happen. You mark my words. My light bulb just went on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the you other thing, is, the other ahead, thing, is, the other thing that's going to come out is how was loose cannon picked? They said it was random that her, you know, it's a, it's a judge pool. I definitely feel like I don't know how they typically do it. Do they put all the judges' names in the hat and pull one? But they put all the names in the hats for Eileen Cannon. Exactly. Something like that. That was a good one. Oh, I just got a um, notification. 
can you all see me okay? Because I just got, we're having a hard time. We're having trouble streaming to YouTube. I can see you. Hold on one second. I've never seen that pop up on stream here before. It seems like the chat just stopped too. Oh no, I see Lisa there. Am I good for everybody? Are we still streaming good? We see you both. Okay. I can see you. I have a problem. I Do think we... it just reconnected. I think we're good. Did we put this one up? Uh... People are saying we were frozen. I was buffering a little bit. I see. We kind of answered this question, Mel, but um, okay. about North Carolina turning blue, which I think we both saw. Um, but will Social Security ever be reformed? Sorry for the two-parter. I like that. Um, North Carolina going purple. Social Security, I see more reformation for the good. What bothers me is when some of the politicians say it's entitlement. Social Security is not entitlement. It's something everybody's mm -hmm. paid into. So that's yeah. not entitlement. And we pay for Social Security, not Social Security. Right. Medicare is not an entitlement. I just went on Medicare. We pay for that. You have to pay for mm -hmm. Medicare. Not one part's free, but the other part you got to pay for. <laughs> so yeah, I, well, I agree with that. It drives me crazy when they call Social Security an, an entitlement because it's our money that we've been paying into it. And you know what? Maybe if if some of these um, people in, in Congress and these Republicans would stop taking money out of it and not putting money back into it, we'd have plenty of money. How many people die before they even get to claim any of their benefits? Oh, that's true. And that, those benefits don't go to their to their estate or to their right. to their heirs. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it drives me crazy. I feel like them putting massive investments into Social Security, I think even people getting more money that are on Social Security and disability, um, I feel like that's something coming up in Biden's second term. Oh, good. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Here, can I put this one up? Yeah, of course. Um, and his ILK, I don't know what ILK means. Ilk, his minions, his people, his the, the ones that hang out. Right. I, right. I, you know, I don't think it's going to affect him at all. You know, I mean, I don't see any catastrophes coming as a result of the eclipse. Um, when Gary and I went to the, the last one, People were energized. I mean, people were, you know, didn't matter about politics or anything. It was like, wow. And even though it was raining when it got dark, people were like, nobody was disappointed. It was like, that was incredible, you know? Uh, so I see, him, I see him howling at the moon like a, like baying at the moon is how I see it affecting him. It's just like it's it's the end of Trump. Like it's a continued downward spiral. But does it is I think all that stuff was destined to happen anyway. I don't know oh. if I think it's the eclipse actually bringing. I mean, it brings in the change, but, um, but yeah, I, I just see like it's a continued downward and spiral. <laughs> it just continues to kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger until it implodes. <laughs> That's what I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Colleen says, uh, "I heard rumors that top secret files being found in." Trump Scotland property. If so, does Jack Smith get them? I haven't heard of that. I I don't. Uh, um, there was some scuttlebutt about it. Um, is that confirmed though? Because I feel like that would be major breaking news. I don't. I don't. I don't think it was ever confirmed. It. But yeah, I do I see top secret documents showing up. Yes, maybe not in Scotland. Uh, and so that'll be breaking news. And it'll mm -hmm. come forward about like um, how the people got them. But I, I, the thing in Scotland wasn't confirmed. Yeah, so I don't think that that was legit. But I always felt like at some point Jack Smith would, would, would go in and get more documents. And do you remember when he went to D.C. and met with somebody and uh, it was like all like it wasn't publicized? Like he just randomly went to D.C. one time? I think that they did something undercover, and I don't know if it was with Bedminster or one of his other properties, but I feel like it was related to the documents and more documents being found. Um, when you said that, I heard a yes. Mm -hmm. I remember it being super sketchy, um, and I was like, there's something 
going on that they're not releasing to the public. It felt like it was more documents being found. I agree. But it's going to come out. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I don't know that one. Yeah. Thank you so much for the super chat, uh, <laughs> Brooklyn girl. <laughs> Hey, I just noticed that you've got 12,800 subscribers. So you're going to be at 13,000 soon. Yeah, I'm almost at 13. We just did our giveaway for, for 12,000 uh, this week. Um, I said I'm going to take a little bit of a break just so we get caught up because the channel's growing so fast and things have been so busy. But we'll do another giveaway here soon. Well, at Christmas but, time, you were at 10,000. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was in December, Crazy. January, February, March. March. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, it's been and it's been really steady with with readings and Reiki sessions too. Just booked up for April, so I told you so. <laughs> All oh, right. I only do fun. I told you so. <laughs> Let's see. Just looking through some of these questions. Um, I don't think so. Absolute politics. Do you see Kansas, Iowa, and Alaska being in play this time around? I think Iowa will get closer, but I don't see them going purple or blue. I Well, Alaska, I got a funny feeling, um, might have an elected Democrat to the U.S. Senate. Oh, that's the thing. Um, and House. Um, what does it say? Do you see Kansas, Iowa, and Alaska... Being in play, so go, like going. Being in play, meaning will they go blue? Being competitive. I'm sorry? Their elections being competitive. I do see competitive elections, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Iowa, I don't think so. <laughs> Kansas, but I, Alaska, will be, Alaska will be fun to watch. Yeah. I don't know if I feel Alaska going blue, but I do think that Murkowski is going to be an independent and she's going to still continue to to um, stay in. Yes. And I see her, I don't think she's, I think she's very much in the middle, but I do see her working with Democrats quite often um, when she becomes an independent. I was actually feeling, I talked about this yesterday with Susan Lynn, like she may announce a, a party change like May, maybe well, next month. She's not going to vote for Trump and mm -hmm. she's not going to support Trump. So, you know, is it anything Trump wants and it comes from the MAGA, she's not going to go for. Do you so, see her endorsing Biden, though? Um, well, if she doesn't support Trump, right? I mean, but I see her becoming a formidable independent. Yeah, I do feel like she I don't know if it's a full throated endorsement, but I feel like it's very similar to Mitt Romney, where if people ask him, will you vote for, for Biden over Trump? And he, I think he pretty much said that he will vote for Biden over Trump. I think it's something similar like that. I don't see her on the campaign trail, but I no. think she'll vote for Biden. Right. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. um, but she's going to be formidable, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, we read we on that already. We read on that. <laughs> Same question back and forth. Everybody wants to know about Canon and if she's going to be taken on. Oh, let's read on that. Good question. Yes. <laughs> uh, Joanne Bassas, please re read on Biden's announcement to BB. They had a phone call today, and I do feel like Biden let BB have it, especially over that. Uh, is it world oh, food? I think Biden probably uh, co totally let Netanyahu have it. And I. I see Biden getting really tough with Netanyahu. <laughs> yep. And saying the United States will not support um, you hurting innocent civilians and aid workers and people that, that to feed starving people, United States will not support you in, in killing those people. Because that attack on the world kitchen, that was planned. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, I agree. And, and that chef, I can't think of his name, came out and said it was planned. And when I first heard about that attack, I thought, wait a minute. That was that was planned. <laughs> I got the same thing. It was like when the um, when they shot all of the those people that were coming up to get food. Right. It was the same thing. 
I feel like he let him have it. He was he's coming in as the Knight of Swords, so he's charging, going full, forward with the attack against BB. Um, I think he's probably told him like, if you continue to harm innocent people, like this is going to jeopardize our relationship. He was talking about the refugees, the people that are out in the cold that have no resources, um, the worry and fear that he has. I think he probably also talked about the fear of this war expanding with um, when they, they attacked an embassy, an Iranian embassy in Syria, um, talking about the death, all the, all the innocent people that they've killed. And like I said, again, like questioning their partnership going forward. He was really firm with them, I feel. Oh, I'm telling you, Biden is really, really, really angry with Netanyahu. We're going to see him get more vocal about it, too. Totally okay. more vocal. Um, Netanyahu, I, I support Israel, but I'm anti-Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. And I see Netanyahu being, uh, have at some point, being tried for war crimes against humanity. Yeah. And he's going to be I agree. Like that. Um, I, I feel Netanyahu out soon. Like it feels like they have a special election, like in the summer or like September. I feel him out like in the, in the coming months, them pushing him out. Um, I do too. And I, what I also see, I talked about this on Linda's show the other day is a lot more people protesting in the streets of Israel. There were tens of thousands protesting, but yeah. then nothing. Yet a lot more people are going to be protesting. So I see Netanyahu going. Yeah. Oh, and I and I did hear that um, Jill Biden was making public statements. Um, Julie says on a YouTube CNN clip, apparently Jill Biden asked Joe to end the war ASAP. She is done with the starving people. Absolutely. It's disgusting. I mean, it's it's horrible how they're treating. It's um, crimes against humanity. Yeah. And. Um, you know, I think this whole Netanyahu wanted this to go on because he took it. He thought it would make him popular, and he mm -hmm. thought it would take attention away from all the crap and all the criminal stuff he did. Wrong answer. He's yeah. going to be held accountable, just like Putin is going to be held accountable. So the thing, same thing that's going to happen to Netanyahu will be the same thing that will happen to Putin. <laughs> or Smith says the election is scheduled for September in Israel. I didn't hear that. I see him vote it out. Don't they call? For, I think he's. I think the next elections in twenty twenty six, if I remember correctly. But I, they can call for an early event election, and that's what I see happening. Exactly. But what was happening is he's already saying that if they call for an early election, he's going to try to make it where they can't. But it he's the one word. That. Just like Putin winning the election in Russia. Do you really think he won? Come on. <laughs> right. It's like every name in the ballot said every name in the in the hat that people said Putin, you know, like you said. Absolutely. I read on this yesterday. There's calls from uh, some of the Democratic Party that want Justice Sotomayor to retire because she has diabetes. And they have like the same fear of, uh, you know, what happened with Ruth Bader Ginsburg and and all of her health challenges and, and don't want to, you know, us to lose possibly. And lose her i don't see her retiring right now she's not that old right she's 69 but even still it's not she, sure she has she has um diabetes but i don't i don't see it being an issue i see i see her staying in for a while well just because she has diabetes doesn't mean she can't do her job exactly, exactly. and so i think um i i see her staying on the court for quite a while <laughs> i think I think she'll be on for like another five or six years. I don't know if it's um, like around 75, it feels like to me, is just what came through. But I don't see her stepping down or bowing down to pressure. And I actually think it's it's kind of ridiculous and gross that some of the Democrats are trying to push her out. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's not going to happen. The opposition called for election in Israel. I don't think that they've announced it yet. I could be wrong unless... It just broke um, with an election in Israel. But regardless, I agree with you. I do see an early election. I'm kind of checking as we're talking. I'm looking at my phone. What I'm doing is I'm checking breaking news to see if we're missing anything. That's why I keep looking down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I did see that Gosar and Biggs um, are being, I think they were subpoenaed for 
Arizona looking into the the fake electors. I see some trouble there. <laughs> As I would normally say, they're going to be in deep doo doo. <laughs> yeah, I feel charges. I, I, do. I don't know if it's if they've brought enough charges against the two of them yet. I don't think that they have, but I see charges, and I see Jack Smith going after them as well. So do I. Absolutely. Um, and I, well, I see indictments I, there. I, I, I'm convinced there's going to be indictments. I feel I see jail time for both of them. Yay. <laughs> you know, here, I just want to say this. Julie says, hello to all the moderators. Thanks for being there tonight. Yes, the moderators are amazing. <laughs> oh, I was going to say with my comment when I first started about the, the nasty comments and all of that. I have several moderators on here. If you see nasty comments, please, you know, if I don't catch them, please, you know, put them in a timeout. We appreciate all the help from all the moderators to help keep this to be a safe and respectful place yes. where we can all hang out and have fun. And the, moderators, all of you. and the moderators can also block them from the channel, right? I think there's two different kinds of mods, but yeah, if somebody's being really bad, just go ahead and block them if, if you have that ability. Um, <laughs> did we ask this one? I mean, we've already answered it, but um, she, yeah, is we've already answered this. Yeah, she's, she is determined to tank the documents case. <laughs> she won't, though. I don't see... Okay. And that's what she's doing now. She's taking off the case before she can, um, before she can take it. I see Jack, as I said earlier, going to the Eleventh Circuit Court of Appeals and asking them to remove her from the bench because those judges on the Eleventh Circuit uh, Court they are already hopping mad at her, and uh, I see them removing her. No, nope. me too. Yeah, I. Well, he put they they voted on that. Uh, I think 14 or 15 week abortion ban, but they, I think they had it worded in there. Um, something about it changing to a six week ban after a certain amount of time. But if anything, like I said, it's horrible for the people in Florida or, or Southeast because there's really no place to get, um, you know, so he, signed, he signed, women. so he signed a complete abortion ban in the state for six weeks or he just said that you can't get an abortion i mean what did he sign exactly what there was was a, this was a while ago but i don't remember i think it was a transitional period where it went to six weeks if i remember correctly the, i don't know if the i don't know if the florida supreme court will uphold that they just i think they well they just voted that i think that they could ban it and when the Supreme Court ruled on that, then it's like 30 days and it switched to a six week ban. I don't know, something crazy like that. But um, but they did also rule that it could be on the ballot. Like I said, I see I see it being overturned by people voting. I do, too. But then what will happen is to Satan will try to say once it's overturned on the ballot that he's going to say, well, but we don't have to abide by that. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That's going to bite him in the butt because, yeah, you do. <laughs> Just like what happened in Ohio when the yeah. people of Ohio voted to uphold abortion rights, then the Senate in Ohio tried something tricky. But did they win on that one, Kevin? I don't, they didn't win on that, did they? The, the Senate in Ohio? No, they did not. Okay. No. Connie says no labels. National director says he'll vote for Biden. That's surprising because I always felt like there was underhanded money there, but they didn't have anybody that they could throw in that spot. Well, they're, what I think is they're going to be then, because they know that they're not going to win, but I see what they're going to be doing is campaigning for Biden. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and marijuana's on the ballot in Florida, too. I oh. see a high turnout. Like I said, it's going to be very competitive. I actually feel like Biden, like, towards the end of the summer, early uh, fall, actually putting a lot of money into states like Florida and Texas, Ohio, states where there's really competitive Senate races um, to try to make these states more competitive. North Carolina, um, I see a lot of investments in, in places that they haven't done the last couple of years. Um, I see at some point that marijuana is going to be legal, made legal in the federal system. 
I do so too. then all the states would have to legalize it. And then if it ever went to the Supreme Court, they wouldn't kick it back to the state because the feds are going to tax it and make money on it. <laughs> I'm feeling like within the next two years, it'll That's be legal federally. And also all of the people that were incarcerated on, on marijuana charges, I see some something to be able to get them out of their uh, prison sentences. Uh, everybody, don't underestimate Jack Smith in this uh, in this um, federal documents case with Eileen Cannon. Somebody just asked Rose Blue, just said, "Will he uh, will um, qualify for a writ of mandamus?" I know what that is. I don't know. Well, if Jack is gonna do about it. I don't know if he's going to do a writ of mandamus, but I think he's got other things up his sleeve. So. <laughs> Well, that's her removal off the case. Uh, that would be a writ of mandamus, but I think there's other things he's got up his sleeve that'll be even more effective in getting her off the case. Got it. I see her off. I don't know. I'll, I'm not a legal professional. I don't know how it all works, but I see her taking off. Right. <laughs> all right. Um, let's do like one more question. I, I'm i not feeling the best today. Sorry, you guys, but we're going to keep it at an hour. Um. I, I see Pennsylvania staying blue. Do you, Mel? So do I. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know about Missouri going blue, but I uh, my guides told me Josh Hawley may, uh, might lose his seat. He will, and I'm hearing gold purple from Missouri. <laughs> okay. And same with Gloria Johnson, as crazy as it sounds. Nobody's talking about Tennessee, but I felt like a lot of momentum around her, and she's actually got a very good chance at winning. She was part of the Tennessee Three, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I had said when that happened that she's going to do great things. And and and, uh, and those other two uh, men that got railroaded, oh, my goodness, they're going to skyrocket. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Okay. <laughs> and and I, they're in the state. I actually feel like, are they both going federally? I feel at least one of them one. Um, being elected like federally for like a Congress person. What I see is that two of them will work their way up through the state and then gain momentum that way and then go federal but one will go federal, like one federal. federal though and one works his way up the state where maybe he's running for like the governor or something it's, like that or or maybe state senate or or state yeah, house something like that. Work well they're them. in the state house i'm sorry they're in the state house right 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 i know that but work their way up i mean <laughs> yeah like leadership That's correct let's end on this smell i think that this is a good one and then you don't hardly ever read on it but Julie Sessions says, what do you see in the future for teachers? The situation's more dire every day. I see legislation being passed where school systems just don't get to willy-nilly say that they ban books for political reasons. I mean, come on. How can you ban Catcher in the Rye? How can you ban uh, To Kill a Mockingbird? Um I see legislation passed where teachers are going to are be paid um, what they should be paid. They're getting a big raise. Not that much. That's right. Um, and I see legislation being passed where you know you, people will be able to teach um, black history and not rewrite the history books. Um, you know, it's funny that in like Florida where they're banning books, you know, they want to ban those books I just mentioned, but yet what if somebody had tried to ban the Bible? Oh, they wouldn't say a word about that. Um, or they would, they would be, how can you do that? Um, so <coughs> at this point in time where it's going to be where politicians keep their noses out of the classroom and let the teachers teach. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I see them being able to, because they've had a major issue with, um, and I don't know how they go about doing it, but with the kids can be very disrespectful and, and there's like really nothing the teacher can do. Um, and, but I see them actually like putting effort into like the teaching extends home and, um, you know, there needs to be consequences because these kids, from what I've heard from te teacher friends, these kids are crazy and there's no repercussions for their actions. I say there's going to be, yeah, things where, you know, uh, teachers can, send them to the principal for appropriate appropriate discipline. I don't mean hitting or anything like that. Yeah. 
but how to identify behavioral issues and come up with strategic plans about what to do with behavioral issues. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I see coming. So Yeah. But I feel like there's hope on the horizon for teachers. There's good news and surprises coming in. I feel like major investments in education for the publics, um, the public schools, but also even for like the colleges, like education and I think the next four years is really going to be looked at and invested in. And like I said, I feel like teachers getting a substantial raise. I think Jill Biden's actually um, the, the first lady is really pushing for that, too. I see the emphasis going back on the three hours reading, writing and arithmetic, you know, um, I think it's an abomination when we have high school seniors who are functionally illiterate because they've been pushed through the system. You know, back when I was in college, one of my professors said, what we're doing with our educational system is creating a nation of mediocrity. Mm -hmm. And he said, we'll see it play out in your lifetime. And he was right. So, I, you know, I, I see emphasis in education being placed on literacy mm -hmm. and, um, um, you know, giving everybody equal chances at education. So uh, I, I see some, like that. I just got a hit and I think I'd heard about it a while ago. I forgot about it, but I see some schools going to like a couple hours longer school days and doing school four days a week. Oh, I'm, I got, I got a yes on that. I mean, it didn't hit me, but I got a yes on that. I don't know if it's, it doesn't feel like it's um, nationwide, but I feel like several seats doing that. When I was in school, we, we got graded on conduct. And it's like, you better behave yourself because yeah. if you don't, you know, when you get home, it ain't going to be pretty. And even kids with behavioral issues behave themselves. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. So, But I, I see them being able to address that because I know that's, very stressful for a lot of teachers it is. right now um, and it's and it's a major problem so I don't know how it is obviously it's not like we're going back to the past and um, you know like teachers hitting students I don't see that at all but it feels like there's definitely repercussions for that kind of behavior exactly um, but I see massive in, in investments in, into the education so do I so do I all right well this is always fun I always enjoy our shows together Mel me too next week will be your channel next week my channel <laughs> perfect so and uh i have your information in the description box along with mine but if anybody wants a reading with you mel how do they get a hold of you they can call my office at 847-590-5411 or they can email me through my website www.meldor.com -E and how do they get a hold of you kevin well, I have my website all up, so you can go to kevinslovingvibrations.com and pick, I, like I said, I just booked up for April, but I have uh, spots in early May, and it has my calendar and availability, and you can book right then and there. I'll send you the Zoom link, and it's pretty, pretty easy peasy. <laughs> and Kevin's going to be at our at our urban retreat. Yay. Yeah, it's you know, be a lot of fun. Kevin and I are really good friends, but we never, you know, we're but we never met each other face to face. Well, it, we've almost have two, but because um, you have family that's not too far from me, but right. I think the last time you guys um, weren't feeling great after your visit, right. but but anyway, and I'm you excited. you got a cough. I can hear a cough. Yeah, it it started off with I think allergies. I I have a Trader Joe's problem, and I love their flowers and uh, all of that stuff. And I got these beautiful hyacinths. And normally they don't bother me, but it is so fragrant. I can tell it's got like a, like my sinuses, my allergies are, are bothering me. So been a drill. I, I don't feel too, too bad, but I just need to rest. I have a few, uh, few days off this weekend. And we'll drill and put some oil on your nose. That'll work. Yeah. All right, everyone. Sending you all a lot of love and blessings, and we'll see you next week. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.